But what do we have in the plant world? We have a phytochemical in a matrix. Okay, so root word matrix means mother, the that which or she who surrounds everything. Um, so the matrix of the plant is all of the companion phytochemicals and all of the interacting phytochemicals and constituent in that plant that accompany and enfold the vitamin C. Right, so we don't see piles of vitamin C powder laying out there on the ground in nature, but um, you can look at any green leaf and conclude that there's vitamin C present. Okay, so what is the, the matrix effect? A molecule in a matrix. Let's just think for a minute about the matrix effect. So what we have is vitamin C, which is an antioxidant, which means a molecule that can change according to what other molecules around it are doing. Um, and vitamin C can behave differently in different matrices. Okay, so isolated vitamin C might not do the same thing that your vitamin C and, you know, here it is in the middle of an orange. It might not be acting the same way. So how a molecule behaves is matrix dependent, matrix specific. Okay, so that's an important thing to keep in mind too because a lot of studies are done on isolated molecules. Right, and um, you know you can inf you can learn from those studies. You can infer information from those studies. Uh, you may or may not be right, but you have to realize that those studies are not you know looking at the activity of the molecule in a plant matrix. So there could be significant differences. Okay, so um, you know you might have heard somebody say something like vitamin C. It's the same molecule no matter where it comes from. Natural source vitamin C is just the same as, you know, synthesized vitamin C. It's the same molecule. So just go buy that cheap vitamin C powder. <laughs> right? So the conclusion does not necessarily come forth <laughs> in that reasoning. Okay. So, um, it, so it's not the same. It behaves differently in the matrix. Right? In the plant matrix. So yes, it's the same molecule, but the companion molecules have a huge effect in determining on what it can do. And you know that's why buying the cheap vitamin C powder is not the same as doing something like eating Indian gooseberries or amla, which are incredibly rich in vitamin C, or or for something you know more local, rose hips are a really really good vitamin C source also. Um, so, matrix effect, really important. Okay, a little bit more about the matrix. It's a dynamic matrix. And this is, this is a huge, huge point, dynamic matrix. Okay, so plants are alive. They're not fixed, right? They don't just make, you know, molecule A, B, C, D, E, F, and G in the same amounts all the time. Okay, so it's it's a, it's a very fluid situation. I mean, think about it. You know, life is alive. Everything is changing. Chemical reactions are happening. You know, metabolism is going on inside a plant, just you know, like inside a person. So it's a very very active situation. Okay, so there's in so many interacting chemicals, you know, and it's an incredibly complex system, like I said earlier. So here's a useful concept to to think about that too: the concept of, of emergent behavior. Okay, so emergent behavior, um, it's not a term that comes from phytochemistry per se, but I, I like to use it here in phytochemistry because what it means basically is complex systems, really complex systems, can't be explained by looking at the actions of their individual par individual parts. Okay, so you can understand, you know, even if you had a, a system of 20 different phytochemicals and you understood pretty well you know, in some test system or other, what each one of them did individually. When you put them all together, sometimes they do unpredictable things. Okay, so that's like behavior that emerges from complexity, right? And so this is important when you think about the action or the activity of a medicinal plant. Okay, because you have this complex behavior or these complex actions or these complex activities that even if you understood all the phytochemicals in there, you could not predict that these would happen because they're a result of the interaction of all these molecules with their matrix. And, 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 and that changes as the plant responds to a number of different factors. Okay, so there's always this shifting, balancing, sort of dynamic equilibrium uh, activity going on inside the plant among the phytochemicals. 
And um, it, it's really interesting. We'll talk about that some more when we get to variability. And I have a study or two I might put up. Um, but uh, it, this can be huge. A plant can be doing something different in the sun than on a rainy day, something really different. Okay, a plant can be doing something really different according to the season, um, according to the time of day. Even now, this is uh, there's some studies are being published, you know, especially in reference to essential oils, um, where they look at you know at 5 a.m. There's a bunch of this constituent. At noon, there's almost none of it. Isn't that amazing? So it's it's very dynamic, very responsive, and um, herbalists have developed ways to deal with this, and we'll we'll talk about that some too. Okay, so there's constant adaptation going on here. And then um, even uh, there's a lot of, you know, we'll talk about this more when we talk about variation, but there's, uh, it, within a single species, there can be a whole bunch of different chemical races, you know, ones that make different constituents. And um, sometimes they might even look the same. So that's, you know, it's a, it's a huge, complex, sort of mind-boggling world when you really start thinking about it. And it, it, it's almost like it makes me not want to study constituents at all. <laughs> but then I get over it. 